definitely. I mean, I, I, as you said, you don't want to go into charity stuff too much, yeah. but then, um, just to explain it, I mean, um, um, I was blessed again to to have you know a very good background. That's for one. But what a lot of people don't know is that I tried very, very hard early on to not rely on it too much. When we started all these, you know, um, you guys, a lot of people have heard about the charities, a lot of people have heard about the business, all of that. Yeah. So that I intentionally tried to avoid, you know, family funding. Right? daddy and mommy and all that because i wanted to understand because i knew i wanted to do this what i need to talk to the i need to be able to explain it for somebody who doesn't have access to the kinds of resources in terms of physical capital that i could have had access to so i intentionally yeah. avoided that and i mean i've started with like um, the three main businesses that i run right now and all that started without any seed capital we purely started free of charge Ten this data, maybe. Ten this credit, <laughs> but purely without yeah. any fund, any cash. No, just banging on. The one thing about my youth that I thank God for is that I was exposed to a lot of people with an entrepreneurial mindset. I, I mean, from my siblings and my father, who is very obviously a very big inspiration to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, to other people. I mean, I knew Ellie came from when I was younger, and. Yeah. She's, blown up i have um, yeah. uncles in the who do real estate people who do um retail people who do um you know shipping in and out of ghana from china i know you know people in i mean almost in any sector that i would have yeah. wanted to get interested in i would have had an uncle or an aunt who knew somebody who would give me time and ear. yeah and i think that is the one resource i learned to value early on because i realized that if i take away all any you know, family resources. If I take away any, you know, background, anything that that is one resource that um, changes who yeah. I am. If I do not have, so that's the one resource I'm banking on. That if I have access to these people, let me do something that gives anyone else who would not have had access to them access. Okay. You okay. know, into the minds of people you would have maybe hardly ever met to even have a but, conversation. But, but then, one, not to cut you short, but don't you think mm -hmm. if you had maybe utilized this um, network and these link-ups, like these people that, you know, these family friends, uh, maybe you would have gotten things done easy or faster? It, it has been instilled in me the work ethic and the, the you know, mindset that can get me there eventually, whether I go through, you know, fast pace from their support or not. Yeah. But my thing is, at the end of the day, when I do get there, do I have experiences and the knowledge, the struggles, the failings, the successes that I can go on to impact someone else with? You can get to the top here and have somebody carry you the whole way. And when you get okay. here, you you are only here as the person is holding you. When the person's hand moves you fall. Yeah, then you can learn to climb the ladder on your own. And if you fall, like, you know how to climb back up. Definitely. If, and you might never fall, yes. The person might lift you up there and hold you up your whole life. The person might, you might climb the ladder and stay up your whole life and never fall and all that. But I would prefer the way that I'm assured if I am to fall, if I am to fall, if I am to, if the thing that is even holding me up in and of itself begins to fail, you know, or begins to not be as steady as you, I can continue to survive on my